Heart of David Ministry is a ministry that I established, and it's basically a ministry of evangelism and encouragement. I believe that the calling on my life, in other words, what God has called me to do, is that's my area, that's my gift. Through the years, I've been recognized as being a, a good speaker, good interviewer, and things like that. So I see it as a gift, but I'm now using that gift to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's basically what Heart of David does wherever I go. Number one, you have to stay in a relationship with God and you have to make it a conscious priority in your life. And I really think that it only happens when you come to a place of genuine gratitude for the price that was paid for you by a God that is so big that it's, un, it's unimaginable to try to comprehend a God that created the universe that we see that could love us. You stay on track by, again, you know, that's why... You know, God called us to keep the Sabbath, you know, uh, holy, to to gather on a weekly basis as a group of people to, to praise Him, worship Him, and then, then carry each other's burdens. Because we're all going to have trouble, we're all going to have anxiety in our life, and there's going to be times when we're up and down. You know, when you become a Christian, it doesn't, what you're really admitting is that you're a helpless sinner, and that, you know, no matter how hard you try to live uh, your life, there are going to be, there are going to be times throughout our lives where in some way we fail. And, and the knowledge of and the hope being in one person, Jesus Christ. So in terms of getting back to it, well, God God lets us all go. I mean, I, as a parent myself, there have been times when I've had to tell my own boys, okay, go ahead. For example, wrestling. I didn't want my son, uh, my sons to try wrestling, not because I didn't love what I did, but I, I, I was afraid for them because of my, I knew the atmosphere they were going into. And as a parent, I wanted to shelter them from that, but I understood that I was going to have to let them find that out for themselves because if I just said no and tried to put that block up, then I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to drive a wedge between me and my son. And I just understood that's one of those times I had to let, let him go knowing that and then pray that through the experience he had that, that, that he would get it. And, and they, they both, you know, two of the three did. My oldest son, Michael, unfortunately, he's still out there and all I can do is continue to pray for him. But, but that's it. God lets us all go, and then we live a life, and, you know, it's like it's not something we can consciously do, I don't think. It's God has got to do something in your life to get your attention. It can be as small or as big as it needs to be, depending on, you know, where you are, how far off the track you have fallen. For some guys, you know, like ministers, I mean, just because a guy's a minister, a man of God, doesn't mean that, that he doesn't. You know, he gets busy, and in his busyness, sometimes he can lose sight of, of just the closeness that he needs to be. And it could be simply he hears a message from another pastor, another preacher, or he, or he reads something that, that hits a note, and he goes, oh, wow. And that's God telling him, you need to come back and draw closer to me. You know, and of course, or it could be something as drastic as what happened to me, and that I was out... And I was, you know, I was an adulterer and, and, you know, it was my wife becoming knowledgeable of what I was doing and me having to confront that, you know, and that was, that was very big. And, and so it's not always up to us, you know, it's almost like, you know, you can come back on your own, but usually there's always some conviction in your life that causes it. Traditions, you know, like churches get... They get stuck, and this is the way we've always done things, and this is the way we'll, we will continue to do things. And the, the one thing that is always unchanging is the message that the church is supposed to deliver, and that's the gospel, that Jesus Christ is the only way. And But what, what happens is uh, churches get in a rut. It's, it's almost like uh, it's like... Like, you know, like people, like as people get older, they get, they get in habits and sometimes they're good habits and sometimes they're not, but they're not subject to change. What I'm trying to say is that it's like Jesus called us to be fishers of men. Any good fisherman knows that for every kind of fish, there's a different kind of bait. And so the method by which we try to draw people to Christ, does those change. But a lot of, a lot of churches, I mean, it's kind of like, the traditions like, uh, you know, like, well, you know, when you go to church, you wear your Sunday best, you dress in a suit, you dress in a tie. Quite frankly, if you think God cares what you wear to church, that's just ignorant. I mean, it's just, it's a tradition of men. Uh, what God looks at is not what's on the outside. He looks at what's on the inside. What God judges is your heart. So when you get caught up in, in, in that stuff and 
all these do's and don'ts. Uh, and, and that's what I'm trying to express is that there's a lot of churches because they have an unwillingness to adapt. For example, music, worship music. You know, a lot of older folks that they've grown up with and they have listened to the traditional hymnal music that's played on an organ in, in churches, and that's what they're used to. So when they, when, you know, when you introduce, you know, like a, an electric guitar and a, a set of drums and this upbeat, kind of a progressive type of, of modern worship music, they, they, they don't like it. They don't like it or they don't, you know, or, or, or for example, rap music. You know, I'm not a fan of rap. I mean, but by the same token, I know Christian rap artists who, whose lyrics to their rap are Christian lyrics. And those who are attracted to that, I said, you know what? You know, it doesn't attract me. But if that's, if that's what reaches them, then I, I say to that person, you just rap on. You know, just because it doesn't appeal to me, you know, and again, that's, that's what I'm trying to say about churches. It's like there's different ways to reach different people. And if you get stuck in a rut and if you, if you, if you refuse to change, then you're, you're going to get left behind. We're talking about something that is totally fiction. It's like a movie. And wrestling's no different. I mean, and Vince McMahon, way back when WrestleMania started, he came out and publicly announced to the whole world, we are sports entertainment. And so <clears throat> I am role playing. And so, and I just happen to play, I'm a, I happen to be one of the villains. And that's the role that I play. But in the context of that story, like I said, ultimately, I'm going, I'm going to get mine in the end. And it's just like in a movie, you know, the, 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 the hero and the villain is established at the beginning. And then somehow the villain does something underhanded to take advantage of whoever the good guys is. And the rest of the movie is about this guy coming, coming up back, like even like, like the, from the Phoenix, so to speak, you know, from the ashes to make the great big comeback and then thwart the evil. And, and that's, that's wrestling. It's like, we start these stories and, You'll have a return match, and then you'll have a second return match, and then you'll have a, you know, like a, <laughs> um, uh, I don't know, even a, uh, I don't know, all, there's all kinds of, like a chain match or a, a cage match, and then there's a, a loser, you know, ultimately, though, but whatever that last blow-off match is, rest assured, the good guy's always going to win. So I don't, I didn't have to try to justify what I was doing because it's all an act.